Hey, True Believers England team here. I wanted to talk about Doctor Who. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about it. Of course, the big thing is the difference between critic score and audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Frankly, I don't know why anybody uses this. And if the only few times that I've looked at Rotten Tomatoes for something was to see how the audience liked it. To me, that's just a more honest review. It, it amazes me that anybody lends any weight to, do, to Rotten Tomatoes. It, 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 it really does. Look at this stuff. I don't know. Anyway, let that truck go by. Anyway, there's a couple of articles about Doctor Who that came out that really interested me because obviously a lot of people are putting Doctor Who down for being uh, too PC, for being about uh, identity politics. And I found this to be interesting. This is from Radio Times, and it says, Chris Chibnall defends Doctor Who's focus on social issues. It's fundamental. Now, I've always said, politics have been around forever. They put it in TV. They put it in comic books. You know, in science fiction, Star Trek was always talking about uh, social issues and politics and such like that. It's just that it buried it in the story. So you either got the message or you didn't, and you could still enjoy the story either way. The problem from what I've been hearing, and once again, I'm not a big Doctor Who fan. I have not seen this season, so I can't really comment on each episode. But what I've been hearing is it's been politics instead of story, and that is where the problem comes so anyway, uh, Chris Chubnell says, uh, let's see, Jodie Whittaker's first series as The Doctor was accused by some of political correctness, but the head writer says it's a response to the times we're living in. No, sir, no. Look, most people don't know about this freaking culture war that you guys are waging on people. And by that, I mean, of course, the, the social justice warrior. They are feeling bad because they didn't get what they wanted. Oh, my gosh. Donald Trump is president. Well, guess what? He's not destroying the country. He isn't. Get off of it. You're acting like fucking children. And it's disgusting, the display. It makes me... I, I know I'm conservative anyway, but I have voted Democrat in the past. Now, I'm, I would be afraid to now, based on what I see, uh, how I see these people act. Because I'd be afraid, and, and at this point, I think it's a legitimate fear that they would do their best to make sure that they never lost power again. Just based on how they act right now. Because let's face it, the same thing they're saying about Trump, they said about Romney. And Romney's a nice guy. Anyway, it goes on to say, Doctor Who boss Chris Chibnell has defended the BBC sci-fi drama Focus on social issues during the most recent series, telling fans that you want to be writing about the world that we live in. And once again, nobody's living in this world. The culture war is not mainstream. Seriously, it isn't. I'm sorry. If you're part of it, and I thought time and space had been criticized by certain viewers as too politically correct, claiming that under Chibnall's leadership, the show had a more socially progressive outlook at the expense of storytelling. Yeah, and I wouldn't call it progressive. Because in order for their politics to work, they have to believe that women are weak, black people are weak, gay people are weak. And to me, that's just not progressive. Anyway, many more fans, meanwhile, noted that Doctor Who has always been a show that examined issues of prejudice, hate, and social justice, while some of the series' actors, including Whitaker herself and companions Tosin Cole and Mandip Gill, argued that the storylines were an accurate reflection of modern society, only as you see it, and that's the problem. You're alienating people who do not see it that same way, or just alienating people who want to enjoy good Doctor Who stories without having your voice shoved down their throats. Now, Shibnall has also weighed in on the issues, telling fans at a screening for upcoming New Year's Day episode resolution that he thought touching on these topics was really important for Doctor Who. I think it's fundamental, Shibnall said. I think you want to be writing about the world we live in. The show is not a standalone thing. It's a response to the times that we're living in and the world that we're in. And when it comes to the things that affect people's lives, I think particularly things that children and young adults are going through, that feels really important. I think the character of the Doctor and her friends as well 
is a great conduit into discussing all of that. And then you add the monsters as well, he concluded. Well, yeah, if you make the, the story, the monsters, the focus, and through that you tell your, your, your politics, it's a lot more palatable. I'm, I am in no way, shape, or form a person who has illusions that all of this is going to go away, that we're going to argue and they're going to say, ha-ha, no more politics. No, that's never going to happen. It will never happen. They will always put it in there. But if they do it like before, if they do it in the be- like they have in the best stories, we can enjoy it without it being thrown down our throats. Problem is that we are now so torqued up about it that the slightest hint of identity politics will trigger me. I know that. The slightest hint of PC culture in anything triggers people who are just tired of it. We're just tired of it. So at this point, I would have to say, take a freaking break. I'm sorry. The people before you guys have ruined it for you. You need to stop now. Give it a rest and then slowly put it back in if that is what y'all want to do. But for now, the slightest thing is going to throw people off. So from the sounds of it, the article says, plenty more real-world issues will be tackled by the Doctor and her pals when the series returns for another run in 2020. Guess we could start this argument all over again in a year or so then. I will not be surprised if there's a new Doctor. Now, of course, a lot of people are saying that it's just the PC culture, but there's also another story that comes from the New Statesman, and um, I wanted to talk about that as well. And it's, uh, once again, it, this is a Doctor Who day, which is kind of funny because, like I said, I am i don't know very much about the Doctor. My brother showed it to me when I was a kid, said, hey, it's great, you should watch this. Every time there's a new Doctor, somebody comes up and tells me, oh, this one was really good and you should check it out. Oh, I, it's its something, you should you should see it. I, I can never get into it. God bless you for being a Doctor Who fan if you are. Just not my cup of tea. So anyway, this is called Why Isn't Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who the Lead Character in Her Own Damn Show? And to me, this is kind of telling. It says, The impression you're left with is that showrunner Chris Chibnail is simply more interested in his male characters than his female ones. Which would, of course, go to the theory that it's all a whole bunch of uh, signaling. Don't care if there's a woman. So all we, it's presenting. Like I said, it's not presentation. It's pre, it's not representation. It's presentation. Hey, look, we have a woman doctor. That's all we need to do. See, we're great. We're good people because we have a woman doctor. Let's let's forget about how she's written. So long as we have a woman doctor, we're good people. Uh, We're 11 episodes into showrunner Chris Chibnail's new regime at Doctor Who now, a complete season plus the New Year's special, and I've realized that there's something bugging me. Actually, there are quite a lot of things bugging me. The endless telling not showing, the complete lack of subplots, the scenes with so many characters in that they look like a publicity shot of the polyphonic spree, the dialogue so on the nose that it makes you sneeze, but most of those are obvious, and they've been there all along, and... Either they bother you or they don't. And if they don't, fair enough. Lucky you. There's another, though, that it took me an embarrassing long time to spot. Although, in my defense, it is hidden behind both the blizzard of preseason publicity and the single best thing about the entire season. Publicity first. The most obvious way in which the series changed this year, certainly the most obvious to normals, and I do believe he's meant to say normies, was the fact that for the first time it had a female lead, the decision to cast Jodie Whittaker as the 13th Doctor was the first thing we knew about Chibnall's take on the show. That's actually something I've said all along. If you're just announcing, hey, we are going to have a female Doctor, that means you have no stories for her. You just want, once again, presenting, not representing. You have no stories to tell with a female doctor. You just want to put one in there, and then you'll write stories. You'll see what you can come up with. Oh, hey, fame. 
And for obvious reasons, it got a lot of publicity. Most of this, despite the inevitable warnings from pink-faced men in their 50s who have never really gotten over the fact that Tom Baker... See, I don't like this. You know, just say fans. You know, you're insulting people as if they don't have a legitimate concern. I heard people telling me stuff like, well, there are no you know, time lords, time ladies, different things. Yeah, they were coming up with things that they had seen in the show that would argue against a female doctor. It had nothing to do with, oh, he's a lonely nerd uh, jacking off in the basement of his parents' house or anything like that. And they always like to toss it. The only reason why you disagree with me is because you are is such a fucking cheap and lazy-ass way to make an argument. And I'm calling these guys out. You are a freaking douche. So anyway, it says, uh, so that was good. There was some disquiet when rumors were, when rumors appeared that the companion was going to be played by Bradley Walsh as if the decision to cast a female doctor needed to be balanced by a ca- a casting a middle-aged bloke in the part normally reserved for young women. But then he turned out to be just one of three companions, and the show has a long history of getting light or light int types to act and if Billy Piper, Catherine Tate and Matt Lucas were all brilliant, why not the bloke who presents the chase? And lo, it came to pass that when the show was broadcast, Walsh's performance as widower Graham O'Brien turned out to be really bloody good. Many of the series' best moments involved him acting in the exact same sort of understanding way that you wouldn't expect from a game show host and the main arc this season is concerned his attempts to be a father figure to his step-grandson, Ryson. And I have no idea who any of these are. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just not a Doctor Who fan. But uh, I guess this guy actually said, hey, if I'm going to do a job, I might as well do it right. It goes on to say who is determined to have precisely none of Okay, the moment in the episode four when Ryan is finally about to say something nice to Graham, only he doesn't get around to it because the latter has just noticed there's a spider the size of a van on the ceiling was a really lovely, lovely moment that you couldn't get on any other show because of the bl- bloody massive spider. Okay, let's get to it. Blah, 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 because he's just blowing this guy right now. Um, but it's with Reg Sweet because you notice something about the storyline I just described. It's about the two men. What's more, it's a story that only happens at all because a female or ca- female character dies pointlessly in episode one. It's an example of the trope known as fridging. Well, whatever you. Okay, I'm now I'm getting pissed off at the writer. Get to the point. Okay, D-d-d-d-d-d. this may have been a conscious choice to talk a bit. The impression you're left with is Chim Nail Sim. Okay, um, let's see. Here we go. Once again, this guy's so unfocused. This may have been a conscious choice to decenter the doctor a bit, and that may even be a good idea. All that lonely God stuff had probably gone as far as it could, but they overshot and made their first female doctor kind of, well, wet. Ooh, that's not a good thing to say about that that obviously must mean something different in england than it does in america she just didn't get a, get to do very much the impression you're left with is that chimnall chibnall is simply more interested in his male characters okay then it goes on to talk about the bechdahl test uh so we know what it is so okay as it happens i think the new season would pass the test i'm fairly sure there's a bit where the doctor and yaz have a conversation about how to stop spaceship eating pig creature, but the okay, well hold hold on. Now I've heard a lot of stuff, and this guy's saying that basically the first female has shown up, but it only he only references one story, and I think part of the problem is he goes about telling the entire god dang story rather than saying in this episode they focused on that, and that episode they focused on this, and this was a story about that, and blah blah blah. And making it short bits rather than one long one. So I'm sorry, you kind of hurt your own argument there, John Elledge. I've heard this, though. I've heard it from other people. That the doctor just isn't the doctor anymore. There's no point to it. The message is more important than the story. So I don't know. Is she or is she not the focus of her own TV show? I'm going to leave you that up to the fans of the show. You guys, you guys can tell me all of this. I just think it's weird that you have people not only coming to it at uh, or coming against the Doctor Who show because of the PC stuff, but they're finding other things as well. 
because that breaks down the narrative that it's the whole lonely guy in the basement jacking off to Doctor Who porn, which, okay, this one would lend herself a lot better than the other ones, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, what do you guys think? What do you think about all of this Doctor Who nonsense? I know I'm going to piss people off by calling it Doctor Who nonsense, but it is. I mean, you know, if you're not going to if you're not going to write a good character, if you're not going to have ideas for a female Doctor Who, then why have it if you're just going to tell the same stories you told? Or worse, if you're not going to have the Doctor step up into the stories that that would usually be told, but instead make it all about identity politics as if that's the only kind of story a woman can be in. Once again, I'm sorry, you racist pigs, but you're wrong. You are absolutely wrong. Your PC culture, your social justice warrior culture is incredibly racist, incredibly sexist. It is everything you think you're against, you are. But that's just my opinion. What is yours? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, click like, share, get word out about the channel. That's very important. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't done it already. And more importantly, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. That's what YouTube really cares about. Now, this is the way I'm trying to make a living. And YouTube has hindered me by cutting off my live streams. But I have just put up a Ko-Fi. And I, have just, uh, I do have Patreon. So if you don't mind, go on over. Drop a dollar in the till on either one. There's a tip jar at Ko-Fi is even. Uh, I also have a Patreon now. So please go on to help. And I would like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.